Hello and welcome to the Monday, April 24th, 2023 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Manuel this weekend published a quick summary of DMARC policies within the Colombian top-level domain. The Overall, frequencies here are probably somewhat below what we have seen in other uh, top-level domains. What surprised me is that the com.co domain, so basically the commercial businesses, is sort of what I would expect, like 8.75%, but government domains are significantly less, coming in at a little bit less than 1%. If anything, you would think that government domains are are more likely going to implement DMARC, but this may also be part of the different sort of regulatory environment in Colombia. This particular diary is also published in English as well as Spanish. And one of the big revelations that I talked about on Friday about the 3CX compromise was that Mandiant uh, found out that the actual compromise started with a 3CX user installing XTrader, a trading application on a home PC. This XTrader application apparently was compromised and then the access provided by XTrader was leveraged uh, to further compromise 3CX. Not a big surprise, but uh, Symantec now came forward stating that, uh, well, XTrader has been an issue beyond uh, 3CX. There are other companies that are likely uh, compromised here. One interesting issue that Symantec points out is that XTrader is in particular uh, useful for futures trading, in particular energy futures, and uh, they suspect that it may have been used to breach some critical infrastructure companies. I just want to say again thanks to 3CX and Mandiant for being so forthcoming and making these things public because as you can see it helps others directly protect themselves. And car hacking via the CAN bus appears to become more and more mainstream with now a number of YouTube videos and so giving at least demonstrations in some cases more tutorials about how to perform these hacks. What they all have in common is that the attacker will connect a device directly to the CAN bus. This is essentially the network that is being used uh, within a car and well it's like many uh, sort of link layer networks uh, not encrypted. So all that hacker needs to be able to do is connect to that network and then inject messages that, for example, a key was used to unlock or start the car. There have been some older issues with like Kias and Hyundai, I think was affected where the car did not actually use an electronic uh, locking system. In this case, the cars have sort of all of the standard uh, security features, but the attacker injects a message in the CAN bus that a legitimate key was used in order to start the car, which of course will then disable all of these security features. To gain access to the CAN bus, an attacker is often using access sort of in the wheel well or other areas where cables may be exposed. And if the attacker is able to just simply sort of physically break into the car or the door is unlocked, then of course they often have access to wiring harnesses in the passenger area. Now, you may see some reports and videos about Bluetooth speakers being used here. What's actually happening here is that uh, in these demonstrations, the attacker is just using a Bluetooth speaker housing essentially to hide the device that's then connecting the CAN bus. So there's nothing bad about Bluetooth or such. This is just a more stealthy way to actually hide the device that's being used for the attack. While these devices appear to be relatively open for sale, the good part is that they are still somewhat expensive. A few thousand dollars is what they apparently are going for now. So if you have an old enough car, it's probably not worth to steal it with one of those devices. And Infoblocks, a company dealing with DNS security, has published a blog post, well, uh, sort of hitting on one of my favorite topics about watching for anomalous DNS queries. They identified what they're calling the decoy dog toolkit. Uh, 
toolkit that uses encrypted DNS queries for command and control. Good write-up here by Infoblox with lots of indicators of compromise to look for various domains that were used in the attack that they observed. So if you are hunting using DNS logs, which is something you definitely should do, well, uh, take a look at that blog post. Well, that's it for today. So thanks and for listening. I'll be on the way to RSA again on Thursday afternoon. We'll have our panel at RSA. Hope to see some of you there. I'll be at RSA Wednesday, Thursday. If you see me, I'll have some stickers with me. So thanks and uh, talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.